Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace Don't be scared if you don't fit in Look who's in the reject bin It's the Raggy Dolls Raggy Dolls Dolls like you and me Raggy Dolls Raggy Dolls Made him perfectly So if you got a bump on your nose Or lumps on your toes Do not despair like the raggy doll and say I just don't care Cause raggy doll, raggy doll, are happy just to be Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me One evening, when everything was still and quiet in the factory, Sad Sack was feeling particularly nice and full and sleepy. The raggy dolls had just had their tea and were thinking about playing a game before bedtime. How about a game of snap? suggested Lucy. Too noisy, said Sadsack, barely able to keep his eyes open. How about a game of, oh, you say, I don't seek, suggested Claude. Good thinking, said Dotty. Everyone agreed. Too energetic, he said. Too much rushing about and holding your breath. You've eaten too much tea, chuckled back to front. That's your problem. No, I haven't, said Sadsack. But all of a sudden, one of his buttons fell off his tummy. Hmm, said Dotty, trying not to smile. I rather think back to front is right, don't you? Come along, Sadsack, sighed Princess. I'll sew it on again for you. So saying, Princess led Sadsack away to the storeroom to get a needle and thread. Ruh, 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 right, said Hi-Fi. Who's going to be it? The raggy dolls held out their hands and back to front counted out a rhyme. One potato, two potato, three potato, four, five potato, six potato, seven potato, more. O U T spells out. Claude was out. You're it, said back to front. Count to fifty and no peeping. Meanwhile, Princess and Sadzak were in the storeroom, unaware they were being watched. There we are, Sadzak, said Princess, cutting off the last of the thread. All done. Thank you, Princess, said Sadsack. I owe you a favour. Well, 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 your highness, said a posh voice. Aren't we a proper little do-gooder? Princess and Sadsack jumped in surprise. Huh? Who's there? said Sadsack. Yes, said Princess. Come out and show yourselves. Only are too happy to, said another mocking voice and three perfectly made princess dolls made a grand appearance from behind some packing cases. They were all very elegant and beautiful and looked exactly alike. They paraded around Sad Sack and Princess with their noses in the air. Oh, my goodness, said one. Just look at the state of her dress. Calls herself a princess, said another. Just look at her hair. And what's the fat one supposed to be, said the third. A clown? or a balloon. <laughs> they all laughed at their own cleverness, but it was all too much for Princess. She burst into tears and ran away. This made Sad Sack very cross. Why are you being so rude? He demanded. Who do you think you are? We are princess dolls, said the first. The very top of the range, said the second. The best that money can buy, said the third. Oh, said Sadsack, wishing he could think of something better to say. Then all of a sudden, he thought of a plan. Please forgive me, he said, bowing low. How can I be of service? I don't know, said the first princess doll. What can you do? We're bored, said the second. Perhaps you could amuse us in some way. Better still, said the third. You can be our servant. Your wish is my command, said Sadsack, bowing again. I shall prepare some entertainment for your delight immediately. As Sadsack took his leave, the princess dolls laughed their silly laughs again. Splendid, splendid, said the first. And quick about it, said the second. Look at his funny little legs, giggled the third. But Sadsack wasn't interested in pleasing any stuck-up princess dolls. He hurried off to find the others instead. 
Unfortunately, they were nowhere to be seen. They were right in the middle of playing hide-and-seek. At last, he found Dotty, who was it. Ah, sad sack, she said. You'd better hurry up and hide. I'll count to fifty. No, listen, he said. He quickly told Dotty all about the princess dolls, how horrible they'd been, and what his plan was. Brilliant, said Dotty. They need to be taught a lesson. They won't forget. It's a good job they don't know about the rest of us. I only hope we can find the others in time. The princess dolls were busy gossiping when Sad Sack returned. Ah, oh, said one of them, here's our little fat servant. What have you arranged for us? It had better be good, said the others. I'm very sorry, said Sad Sack, but there's an emergency. It will be safer for you to stay here. Safer? What do you mean? The princess dolls listened wide-eyed as Sad Sack explained that there was a powerful wizard in the factory and he was casting spells on anyone who didn't believe in him. What rubbish, said one of the princess dolls. I believe you're just trying to trick us. Just then, back to front rushed into the storeroom. Oh, help, help, save me, he begged. Who are you? What's happened? asked the dolls in alarm. Oh, I'm just an ordinary handyman doll, explained back to front. Oh, I saw this wizard and he made my head point the wrong way just because I laughed at his French accent. The princess dolls looked at back to front's head and then at each other. It must be true, they said. Then Lucy rushed into the room. Oh dear, what am I going to do? That nasty wizard made my arms and legs all loose and look, now my head comes off. Oh, you poor thing. What did you do? I only laughed at his stutter, sobbed Lucy. The princess dolls turned to back to front. You said he had a French accent. He uh, speaks in all kinds of funny voices, said Sad Sack, just to sort of see if you laugh at him or not. Uh, oh, no, said back to front quickly. I think I can hear him coming. Save us begged Lucy. Ha! Huh, save yourselves, said the princess dolls, and they ran out of the room. But at the end of the corridor stood a tall, dark figure with a long, pointed hat. Ah! Oh, it's the wizard, yelped one of the princesses. Bonjour, said the wizard. Comment allez-vous? Oh, uh, très bien, merci, answered the dolls. And they ran away from him as fast as they could. But around the next corner, there he was again. Good, 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 good evening, la, 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 ladies. How are you, 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 you? Oh, well, f -f -f fine, thank you. And they ran away again, back to the storeroom. Once inside, they pushed a big packing case against the door. But when they turned around, there stood the wizard again. Oh, hello. How frightfully nice to see you again. The princess dolls pushed the packing case aside and rushed out as fast as their legs could carry them. All right, you can come out now, laughed Dotty, removing her wizard's hat and stepping off a chair. Back to front, Lucy and Sad Sack came out of their hiding places and were joined by Claude and Hi-Fi, the other two wizards. Well done, Sad Sack, said Lucy. Yeah, it was a brilliant plan, said Back to Front. It was for Princess, said Sad Sack. They were really horrible to her. Back in the reject bin, everyone agreed that teaching the princess dolls a lesson had been a lot more fun than playing hide-and-seek. Just think, said Princess, when she had stopped laughing, if the machine hadn't cut my hair and ruined my dress, I could have ended up just like them. But it did, and you didn't, said Dotty. Thank goodness, added Sad Sack. And so, the Raggy Dolls settled down for a good night's sleep. Unlike the horrible princess dolls, they spent a most uncomfortable night hiding in Mr. Grimes' waste paper basket. Raggy Dolls, Raggy Dolls, dolls like you and me. Raggy Dolls, Raggy Dolls, made imperfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet. And join our raggy doll chums Cause raggy dolls, raggy dolls Are happy just to be Raggy dolls, raggy dolls Dolls like you and me